Welcome back to the Mining Show, PDAC 2024. I call it the happiest place on earth. We're here today with Chrysalis Copper and Chris Bunsick. It's your first time doing this. It is, yeah, thanks for having me. Very happy to have you here. Great story. One of the best copper stories I have heard at the whole show. So as I understand it, you're looking at reworking an old mine in Chile. There's some workings left, and putting it in production. What's our time frame for that? Well, the time frame for production from the, these two operations, two historical producing mines, okay. uh, is less than 12 months. That's shocking. It is. And, and we've got them for a great price. Uh, they've got non-compliant resources on them, non-43-101 compliant resources, which okay. in time we will go back and redrill. In fact, the resources, we've seen the databases, they're great. They just don't have core. So you can't track back to the original core. Exactly. So no one can sign off. Correct. So we'll go back, we'll twin those and within the next 12 to 18 months, we'll have you know, 43 one one compliant resource on each of these mines. It, it, it's shocking that you're going to be in production within 12 months. How are you going to do that? The, the first project called Linderos has a mine called the Tambor Mine, and it can be operated under a small miner's permit in Chile. And uh, historically, it's produced, uh, you know, it's produced more than 20 million pounds of copper. Um, we're going to go in there and under the small miners permit, which allows us to produce 5,000 tons per month, um, have some small production. That's going to cover our nut as we go to do more work there. Um, again, prove up the resources, work towards what we need to to uh, plan for an expansion. Something on the order of 2,000 to 2,500 tons per day. Right. No 43101. No so 43101. These, these are just are conceptual. Spitball, spitballing numbers. Spitball numbers. Yep. That's right. Yeah. And at Santa Monica, it's a similar story. So they have a historical resource there, not compliant. We are going to put that into production under a small miners permit, which is already in place. Right. Um, the, the vendors have that in place. And so we'll go back, turn that on. Uh, we'll, we're raising a little capital for equipment, et cetera. And again, within 12 months, we'll be up and running there too. And this isn't your first time doing this? No. You've run companies before that made money for their shareholders? Correct, yeah. Tell us about that. So back in 2013, I, I joined a company called Murumbi Resources. Um, looked at a number of projects, and then ultimately in 2016, we acquired the El Machito mine uh, in Honduras from Nearstar. Uh, Nearstar had, you know, kind of run it into the ground a little bit, and, and so within 12 months, we turned that operation around. Uh, we took it from 1,200 tons per day to 2,400 tons per day, double production. Within 12 months, it was free cash flow positive. That, and that's amazing, too. It was a great result. Yeah. And what happened to that? Uh, we ran that mine for about five years and ultimately, you know, with, with the approach of COVID and the impacts on the zinc price, um, I think we accrued a little debt over the course of a couple of months. And, and you know, I'd say for the at least for the four years that we that we ran that mine, we were above water for shareholders and did quite well. But with the onset of COVID, we were forced to sell that operation. We were also uh, progressing the Lagoa Salgada mine in Portugal or project in Portugal uh, on which the company works currently. Um, I left the company at that point and started a copper company called Alto Verde Copper. Um, at Alto Verde, we had uh, three projects that we pulled out of Freeport McMoran. Um, this is along with a, a fantastic team. They've got a great board um, and uh, took that company public uh, after about three years. We did work on the projects, um, got it public this past March in a vehicle called Antera Copper. It's still right. listed. It's, it's on the CSE. Um, and, uh, and, and again, they continue to work on those projects and projects in British Columbia. Uh, this past September, I, I left Intera to pursue some other opportunities. So it sounds like we're going to have a lot of news in a very short period of time. I think so, yes. This is great. This is a great story. Again, we get up and running, we get into production, we hit our milestones on the resource uh, twinning of holes, et cetera. Uh, it's, it's not going to take a lot of work. And so there's going to be a lot to, go, lot to do in the next 12, 18 months. So let's chat in about three months. Absolutely. Chris Bunsen. Chrysalis Copper, thank you for your time. Thank you very much.